Hi and welcome. Yesterday I got a question from my beloved cousin Maria to read this uh, chapter from this beautiful book Message for the Tribe of Many Color of Little Grandmother Keisha Crowther uh, and today I want to read her beautiful chapter it's from her life um, and this chapter name is to recognize true beauty the lesson of the two trees so I'm gonna read this for you and I really want you when you listen I want you to sit down to close your eyes and just listen there is so much deep wisdom and true knowledge in her words so to honor yourself and to honor her words I want you to just go in and be to recognize true beauty the lesson of the two trees as a child I learned very directly that nature holds the key to all life its meaning and its fulfillment. Mother Nature, as a living, breathing life force, can and thus speaks to us, begs us to listen, to see and to understand. Not only does she give us life each and every moment, but she gives us the joy we experience within life. Everything she offers is alive and buzzing with energy, love and excitement. No blade of grass goes unnoticed by her. Not one leaf or no one grain of sand is uncared for. She is the great mother of all. And her family is the whole universe. I was taught these things by experience, by being taken care of by her as her child. I was taught through a pure joyous feeling that all living things are constantly feeling and speaking to another and to us. And I was taught by spirit one of the other side while I was in her perfect care. Ever since I was about eight years old, I have been spoken to by a voice that has taught me a lesson and given me clear and direct information about the universe and the law of life. A gentle, patient woman's voice would come that would speak to me and teach me specific lessons about life. I don't know why the lesson came when they did. Sometimes they came when I was in dire need. At other times they came when I was very still and quiet and tuned in to the flow of natural world. The lessons were very clear and empathic. The voice would always start by addressing me as child. If I did not understand, the entire lesson would be repeated. Later, when I was called to be a shaman at age 30, I was told by Native American elder that I was the grandmother's, it was the grandmother past who had been speaking to me that the elders knew I've been taught like this since I was a child. I had never told a living soul about this until I was about 28. And even then, it was with great anxiety I shared this about myself. Being raised in a devout Mormon to admit this, that voice was speaking to me, certainly would have got me a direct ticket to hell and damnation. 
I was not sure myself what to make of this, how to explain it and where I might be crazy. I only knew that it made me feel very different from others and that it was best not to speak of it, ever. I will never forget the relief I felt when I was told that someone understood what has been going through and there had been a reason for it, knowing that I was not crazy after all. Among those lessons I was taught, I will never forget the one showed me the nature of true beauty and how to perceive the true value of things. I was becoming a young woman that summer when I found myself at my secret spot near the water edge. I often went there to escape the realities of the physical and sexual abuse that was happening to me at the hands of my two uncles living next door. Wounded deeply and struggling with my self-worth in the face of such senseless cruelty and humiliation. I hide among the trees and wept. I was feeling very low, worthless and unlovable, to put it mildly. I remember wondering how people could act with such hate and violence. How could someone be so cruel to another person? All I could think about was how I could never go to heaven now. How much I must be unloved by God. Ugly things were happening to me and I felt I had been made ugly by them. Religion has taught me that even to kiss before marriage was a sin against God and solely punishable. No. Much more had happened to me than a kiss, and the trauma of it was turning over and over in my mind and heart, convincing me I was no longer worthy of God's love or of heaven. And in the Mormon tradition, if you were not worthy of heaven, you were also not worthy of having your family with you after that. My heart was broken and my self-worth was gone. I was convinced that not only was I ugly or dirty, but I was also unwanted by God. In my heartache and confusion, I decided to walk toward the field of high grass and pine where I could hide among the trees. I happened to find the most beautiful tree to sit under. It has the most perfect pine tree shape and it needless wear the most magnificent shade of green. Its smell was intoxicating and the bark had not a scrape or blemish on it. It seems to me the most perfect tree. Directly in front of me stood another pine tree that was a bit taller. The, the bark was deeply gashed where the sap had misly started to seep down the entire length of the trunk. This fact alone repelled me and made me not want to go near it. It licked it looked deformed, scared from where it had been stuck by lightning. I sat between those two trees, thinking how much more beautiful was the tree under which I sat, and thinking in an unconscious way what an ugly tree the one in front of me was. Suddenly, I got that funny heavy feeling I get when I'm about to receive a teaching from spirit. So immediately I went inward 
and prepared myself to receive whatever might come. I waited patiently and then I heard. It was a woman's calm, clear voice. The same voice that had spoken to me before. Child, what do you see? She asked. Trees, I answered. Which of the trees is the greater tree? She asked. I answered. The beautiful, perfect tree under which I sat was the greater tree. Wasn't it obviously? Then I was taught something about that other ugly tree that I will never forget. The voice told me that the strongest and most important trees in the forest are those that have fought a hard battle and have bravely carried their scars. For a tree to grow strong within its core, it must experience something harsh that puts it in survival mode, a fierce winter, a drought or a lightning struck. If a tree has been threatened, damaged, broken and scarred, it will either die or grow on to become one of the strongest trees in the forest. Those trees that have made it through a battle, that have lived in survival mode longer than others, produce not only the most seeds, but the most dominant and strong seed. Those pine tree that have weared much sand, all their life energy into the pine core. And these are the trees that repopulate the whole forest, ensuring its continuance. Hours went by as I sat there thinking about what I was being told. I was then asked again by the voice, which is the greater tree? My answer this time was very different and my chest burned and tears welled up in my eye. I answered that it was the so-called ugly tree in front of me that was the greater one. The most strong, glorious and beautiful tree was the one that had survived much and that bore the scars of its struggles and battles. It became capable of a vast amount of regeneration and the giving of a new life. Once the lesson was over and I was sure the voice was not going to return, I sat at the water's edge and looked into my reflection. There sat a girl with a broken spirit and with tears streaming down her face. I really looked at myself. Perhaps, like the tree, I too was not as ugly as I thought. I pulled the hood of my green sweater up over my head and started for home. Thinking back on these lessons now as an adult, I see how, much, how important this is to understand on a deep level, how it applies to so much in our lives. How many of us carry scars that we would rather not carry and feel damaged by 
what we been experienced through our lives. How many of us regret our past hardship, the pain we have experienced and still experience, wishing it would go away. How many of us feel that we are not beautiful and lovable? Or that we are instinctively flavored. I struggle with this feeling as a child. And I still do. I think we all do. I felt that something must be terribly wrong with me. Because I wasn't really loved or protected as a child. I could not understand what had marked me for such treatment. Such hardship. I made the assumption as any abused child would that God must not love me, that I was not worthy of love and protection. My religious training supported this view that we human beings are instinctively sinful and bad and must earn our entrance into heaven by being near perfect unblemished and pure being. These religious values are contrary to life itself and do much damage to people and do much damage to people. This way of thinking could not be further from the truth. Yet, as a child, I was taught to think this way. What I learned from the two trees is that it is our wounds that make us strong. Our imperfections are signs of what we have had to struggle with to survive. Markers of what we have lived through and learned on our journey. What we have suffered can make us wiser, more understanding more compassionate and stronger. The soul can never be wounded. Only our idea of who we are carries the wound rather than feeling blemished or tarnished by what we have been through. We can claim our scars and know that the greatest beauty is found beneath the surface of things when we look deeply. True beauty and goodness cannot be judged from the surface of things. It takes deep listening and seeing. We seldom ever see the value of who we are or our own beauty. Other may see it, but we cannot, or, but we often cannot. For most of us, it is a lifelong commitment to really love ourselves and accept the gift that our struggle and pain have given us. In my own healing journey, in my late twenties, I finally had the courage to share with others some of the things that have been true in my life. I never forget a line that my dearest friend wrote to me at that time. I carry it with me and it was essential in helping me become reconciled with my past and understanding my gift and suffering has given to me, the simplest statement was, the wound is where the light gets in. The wound is where the light gets in. We may struggle for years with the question of why something had to happen to us and what purpose it could possibly have served especially when we lost something in the process. Though I think that healing from abuse 
is a lifelong process. I can see that just by surviving and making a commitment to living and being a loving person, a tremendous amount of light was opening in my life. My hardship put me at the very edge of life and death, and wheels were torn away in the process, because I was so open and in need for help. Mother Earth stepped in and blanked me in her love. Spirit stepped in and taught me so that I could stay here, so that I could live and continue on. As many of us already sense, it is often through extreme adversity that we are open to spiritual blessings and deep wisdom and deeper vision. Though I still sometimes struggle with the question of why I had to s such a difficult childhood, I know that my purpose in speaking to you now is directly tied to those things I learned as a child on the wilderness. It is also in some mysterious ways tied to the painful things that draw me to the wilderness and to the arms of the great wisdom. So this was the chapter to recognize true beauty, the lessons of the two trees from this beautiful book, Message for the Tribe of Many Colors of Little Grandmother. Love and blessings to you.